Hey guys, welcome to my movie collections update video for the month of March. Alright, so I'm going to talk about some of the new movies that I've been watching over the past couple of weeks. And uh, I don't really have a lot of movies to actually show you this time around, so this video should be relatively short compared to some of my previous videos. Alright, so uh, regardless of that, I still have a nice selection of things to, um, to point out, and I'm going to make some recommendations as well. So let's get started, alright? Now the first video, or video, but the first film that I have to show you is uh, Warner Brothers Argo, which starts um, Ben Affleck, Brian Cranston, and John Goodman. Now, I have to say that this movie is absolutely amazing, and there's a pretty good reason as to why this film actually won Best Picture at the Oscars recently, and I have to say that Ben Affleck did an amazing job directing this film, and um, I'm just amazed at just how well he, he manages to transition between scenes, just how he kind of set up shots in order to, to capture just the, the pure emotion and uh, adrenaline and real life situations of what these characters are actually going through as they were being held hostage and how Ben Affleck's character is trying to get them out. Again, just, just to comment on the fact that this movie is amazing the way it was done and Ben Affleck did a really great job you know, directing this film and even, you know, playing the lead character as well. I was really amazed at, you know, at, you know how he um, fit into this, this role of portraying this character that goes in there and not really being certain as to whether this plan is going to work but still goes into it head first and fully, fully believes in it 100% that, you know, he can pull this off, you know, and again, everything that happens is really amazing. The next movie that I have to show you actually comes from Magnolia and it's this film called Compliance. Now if you've seen my previous video, you've basically you know, heard everything that I have to say about this film. Um, so I'm going to keep my comments pretty short on this one anyway. But uh, it's about um, this fast food chain restaurant that receives a call from an anonymous person claiming to be a police officer. And this person talks to the manager of this fast food restaurant and tells her that one of her employees is, is being accused of stealing money from a customer there and the quote-unquote police officer uh, coerces the employees to do crazy things to, to the uh, the employee this character called uh, named Becky in the film um, and that's pretty much all that I want to say in terms of the plot of the film because from there you can pretty much get an idea as to Again, fake or prank callers calling some place and claiming to be this, that, and the other, and coercing and forcing other people to do certain things just because they claim to be someone of authority or, or whatever. So, um, again, I have to say that I have mixed feelings and emotions about this film. On the one hand, just as a film, it's actually really, really good. You know, a lot of strong emotions, scenery, and, and you know, everything that happens. But at the same time, my 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 criticism of it is it's just not so much about the film but just the fact that the the characters that uh, this movie was based on were actually so naive to actually fall victim to something like this because this movie is actually um, inspired by true events so it's it's hard to imagine that people can't use common sense in order to judge a particular situation and say, you know what, this feels completely wrong, I'm not going to do it. Or just ask for more evidence as to whoever's calling to prove to me or whoever, you know, that they are who they say they are. You know, so that, that's, that's my only thing. And it has nothing to do with the film. Again, the film is fantastic. I really loved it, you know, for what it, for what it was and the message that it, it, it's trying to convey to audiences again that, you know, there are pranksters out there that do these kind of things. And unfortunately, there are victims, you know, that, that fall pray to these people you know it's sad but you know at the same time as you're looking at it you just can't believe some of the things that this guy is, is having these people do to this to this young woman you know it's really unfortunate you know it's the other side the I guess the realistic aspect of it is that that people unfortunately you know don't use better common sense and they fall victims to stuff like this but other than that you know I definitely recommend this this film if you haven't seen it you know compliance the next film that I have to show you comes from Focus Features or Focus Pictures and it's for a good time call and um, it's about these two girls that kind of uh, they knew each other back when they were in college and because of an incident that happened then they kind of had a bit of a fallout and years later they're both pretty much you know living their lives you know and they 
each separately find themselves in a situation where um, they needed to move out of their homes because they can't continue to afford or they're being thrown out of their their homes by uh, the super or the landlady. I can't remember exactly who they were being thrown out by. But anyway, a mutual friend that both of these two characters have kind of brings them together to kind of live under the same roof. And a lot of the the reasons that they had a falling out to start with kind of start coming back so they're they're kind of skeptical that they can actually coexist under the same roof and you know you see some of the things that start happening in terms of how they're beginning to have disagreements because of you know how they want to live and how they want to fix up the house and things like that but that's just that's just like the beginning just you know the uh, the middle the, the bare beginnings of the film what ends up happening later on is that um one of the characters this one i believe finds out that the roommate is actually having kind of like a side business in the house where basically she is a phone sex operator and she figures out that she's making pretty decent money and the this character actually needs to get a new job because she won't be able to afford to continue living in the apartment so she agrees to kind of be like a partner and they both start working in the phone sex operator business and they start making a lot of money and they, they begin to, to kind of like formulate the friendship based on that. Like they're beginning to rekindle that friendship that once existed but again because of that fallout, you know, they, they kind of deteriorated and fell apart. So it's actually a really great funny film in terms of just, just some of the stuff that they actually do in order to keep the phone sex uh, you know, operator business going on right out of their, their apartment that they're both sharing. And I have to say that some of the some of the best comedic moments happen when they're actually uh, talking to uh, Seth Rogen because he makes a cameo appearance in this film, and he's one of the, the the people that's calling the the phone sex hotline, and they're both catering to whatever his his wishes for a you know a phone sex session you know, and it's really hilarious basically what happens in that entire scene in there. So um, the next film that I have to show you comes from Magnolia. And it is Jack and Diane. Now, um, this film is about these two girls that meet over the summer. And they kind of begin to form this relationship where they're beginning to fall in love with each other. But the thing is, is that one of the girls actually has a dark secret. And, um, well, the dark secret is, is that one of them is actually a werewolf. And I'm not giving away anything by saying that, you know, that that isn't like the, the big major twist at the end of the film because you see which one of these characters is actually the werewolf very early on in the, in the film. So that's not really giving anything away. This film basically is more about just, you know, how these two characters actually deal with the fact that they have these feelings for each other and knowing that a lot of people around them probably don't see their relationship as being something that they should continue to pursue or just having differences of opinions about you know again two two females basically you know falling in love with each other um but for some reason you know they deal with those outside conflicts and even with some of their you know uh personal emotions towards each other because they also kind of you know have problems trying to figure out how they you know want to continue you know being with each other you know in a difficulty with that and then there's the the uh, the other thing about you know the werewolf aspect of you know like how how they're trying to how the one character is trying to control those emotions which are basically more on the borderline being animalistic emotions as well. And uh, I mean just to kind of like to summarize the whole idea or scope of the film is it's basically I would categorize it as a uh, character study film because it's basically just seeing how these two characters deal with the situation and trying to, you know, cope with the idea of, you know, really being in love with each other, despite the fact that, you know, other people may have objections to that, and even just how they, they, they deal with their own personal conflicts that they might have as well, besides the fact of, you know, the whole werewolf thing, too. But other than that, you know, I would definitely check this movie out. It's a really great film, um, which also stars Juno Temple, which, uh, who was in um, um, Killer Joe, and uh, it was another movie. She was also in... Um, in The Dark Knight Rises, where she played um, Catwoman's kind of like little little partner friend, the other girl that was there, that's Juno Temple, so she's in this film as well. And she does a really great job here, you know, so I really like her in this film. So I definitely check, check out Jack and Diane if you haven't too, all right? 
The next film that I have to show you also comes from Magnolia, and it's Nobody Walks, um, which stars um, John Krasinski and Olivia Thurbley, as well as uh, Mose, uh, Rosemary DeWitt. And um, this movie also falls along the same lines as Jack and Diane, where it's basically, I would categorize this as more of a character study film. And it's about this character, um, who I believe she calls herself uh, Martine, which is Olivia Thurlby, Thurlby's character. She plays Martine in this film. And she's basically a, um, a filmmaker who comes from New York to, I believe, Southern California to meet with John Krasinski's character. And because they had kind of got into agreement that he would help her do the sound effects and sound editing for her short film project. And there's this relationship that begins to form between the two of them. And the thing that's, you know, about it is that John Krasinski is actually married to, uh, I believe, uh, Rosemary DeWitt's character. And, you know, she has a kid. So he already has a family already. You know, he has that obligation. But when Martine's character shows up, you know, and begins to stay at the house just to get the project finished, you know, and they start working together, he begins to see, you know, uh, who she is and he begins to like her character, you know, for, you know, how she's kind of like a very much free-spirited person, but she's she's very pretty much level-headed and, and like straight as an arrow towards getting what she wants. And he likes that about her. And, and the more they, 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 they kind of work on this project, project together, you begin to see that they begin to uh, have emotions for each other. And that begins to build. And it's just interesting to see just how when one person comes into an already established dynamic, how this one person can have such a profound effect that it affects every single person in that already established family or that established, you know, foundation that's there. And that's pretty much what happens in this film as well. So that's why, you know, again, it's, it's pretty much like a character study film, you know, just seeing how uh, Olivia Thurlby's character affects everyone around her, even though she's just there to, to do a project, but yet, you know, again, she begins to fall, you know, or affect these other people in there. So it's a really great film, actually. And again, you know, this is like, I believe, maybe like the third film that I've seen Olivia um, Thoroughly's character, or Olivia, not her character, but just seen her in it. The previous movie that I've seen her in was, of course, uh, Dread. And I loved her in that movie. And after I saw this movie, it's like, oh my God, I think I'm in, I think I'm in love with Olivia Thoroughly's character. You know, not her character, I'm just in love with her now. So, I mean, it's, it's weird, yeah. But, you know, I, I really just uh, just enjoyed her character in this film. You know, it's, 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 it's a very honest and open look at relationships. And just how, again, like I mentioned before, how one person can affect an entire dynamic, you know, of, of people that already have, you know an established foundation going on. I mean, I don't even know if that makes sense, but you know, for those of you that, that have seen this movie or kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about, then you, you'd understand basically, you know, of what's going on in this film. But again, you know, I really love this one and I definitely recommend this one for anyone who hasn't watched it. As a matter of fact, I believe this movie won the 2012, um, what is this? This is called the uh, Special Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival for 2012. You know, and it's, it's considered probably one of the best American films of 2012, too. And I have to say that, yes, yes, it, it pretty much, I guess, does fall in that, in that category. Um, you know, again, the story basically is what's, what's really motivating here and very enticing just for the fact that, you know, it provides a very honest look at relationships, you know, and how characters deal with the fact that something is going on and maybe they need to either remove themselves from it or maybe there is something there that they can pursue and just how it affects everyone that's involved in that you know so definitely i would re i definitely recommend this film if you haven't already seen it. it's called nobody walks you know by magnolia so definitely recommend that one the next film that i have to show you comes from universal and that is silent hill revelation which is the sequel to silent hill which i believe came out i think maybe two or three years ago and it pretty much just picks off Picks up, not picks off, but picks up right where that last film left off. Um, no, I'm sorry, I take that back. Because basically, I believe there's about an eight year difference between the last film and this one. Because the uh, the main character of the little girl in the first film, she's older right here now. Now it's older and she actually changed her name to um, Heather 
for this film. And what happens here is that Gypsy still has nightmares about Silent Hill, but she and her father have kind of been, you know, moving around from time from town to town, trying to escape authorities and try to, and as well as trying to get further away from Silent Hill. But her father ends up getting kidnapped and taken back to Silent Hill, and basically she decides to go back to Silent Hill herself to try to find and rescue her father. And that's pretty much the gist of this film. And along the way, of course, you know, they find new new monsters that start attacking her and things like that, and how she tries to survive until she reaches her father. And I have to say that the depiction of hell in Silent Hill for this movie is a lot better compared to the depiction of hell the way it was done for the original or the first Silent Hill film. And I have to give credit that they did a really good job, you know, creating this very visceral, guttural look of Silent Hill in this, in this, in this film. I mean, I have to say that, you know, it's, it's actually it was fun. I mean, it, it does have, have its, its problems, mostly having to do with, with um, continuity within the film itself. I mean, there's certain things that just happen, and then for some reason on a, another scene right afterward, you know, it's kind of like the, the opposite is being done. Right, so it's kind of weird. I mean, there were a few instances where dialogue just didn't match up, so you kind of have to pay attention for those. But for the most part, just the, the, the visual representation of Silent Hill is actually really creepy in this film, a lot more so compared to the, to the original, like I mentioned before. So, you know, I, I definitely like, you know, I, I tend to kind of, you know, uh, show a little favoritism to a lot of the video game film adaptations, uh, more of the recent ones like Resident Evil and, and of course, Silent Hill. But, um, you know, again, it's, it's a pretty de decent, you know, sci-fi-ish horror paranormal type film that's based on a game. And it's actually based on the third game in the actual Silent Hill franchise. So, and it, it did a really good job, actually, of casting the, uh, the main actress to play uh, Heather's character from the game. And they did a really good job capturing the actual game design and you know, portraying it here in the film, she she does look very much like her character in Silent Hill 3, you know, from the hair, the face, down to the the actual clothes that she wears, and they did a really good job, completely replicating her look. So that's one of the one of the the big pluses that a lot of people gave this movie is the fact that the character does look like the character in the game. So now the last film that I have to show you. Uh, comes from MGM and it is the latest Bond film that came out recently which is Skyfall. Now I have to say that I really enjoyed this movie a lot out of you know the, the recent trilogy of Bond films that came out that you know were done with uh, Daniel Craig playing 007 and uh, this one in particular again just the way that it was shot to catch to capture these immaculate landscapes were unbelievable it was it was beautiful the way the way it was done uh the way it was shot and daniel craig does an amazing job you know again reprising his role as 007 it's so much so that in some ways he kind of even captures the 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 mood and and attitudes of of you know sean connery and and even um Roger Moore's portrayals of James Bond and, and you know, doing those early Bond films. And at the same time, this movie does actually pay a lot of homage to the original James Bond films, specifically the ones that were done by, you know, Sean Connery and Roger Moore. And I really appreciate the movie for actually doing that. And the film basically is about, you know, um, 007 trying to help M stop a terrorist plot from an old agent that was, I believe, was thought of to have been dead, but of course wasn't. And this particular rogue agent now that used to work for MI6 um, is trying to completely destroy MI6 from the inside out. And you know, this person, the uh, this rogue agent who's played by Javier Bardem, you know, you know, pretty much elaborates this amazing scheme or plan to try to destroy MI6 and kill M at the same time and basically 007 basically you know is, is trying to stop him from doing that so again a lot of the visuals in this movie are fantastic you know that just the camera angles these beautiful landscapes some of the homages 
you know, it's, it's really a nice touch. And it just reminds me a lot of the old original James Bond films that I grew up watching when I was younger. So I definitely recommend Skyfall if you haven't seen it. And um, that's pretty much it for this uh, video that I have right here. Like I said, you know, um, it was going to be pretty short because those are the only films that I had a chance to watch right now. Um, I've, I have some other films that I, have, I haven't watched yet, so I haven't actually shown them to you here. So I'll probably show you those to you in my next video. Um, and since this one's coming out very early in March, I'm pretty much thinking that I'm going to release another one very soon. And uh, since I only had a small amount, I'm thinking that from now on I'm going to keep my video shorter. So I'm not going to actually show you too many things. So that way I can actually come out with more videos a lot sooner compared to, you know, before. So hopefully this time around I'll be able to kind of release maybe two videos a month for my movie collections update um, instead of just one. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it for this one. Um, again, as always, if, uh, if you like my video, you know, like what I said about the films and things like that, you know, definitely hit like. Definitely subscribe to my video. Well, not subscribe to my video, but subscribe to my channel so you guys can keep seeing some of the new material that I put up every so often. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. All right, guys. Definitely also follow me on my Twitter uh, so you can see, you know, what's going on there. Look forward to the next video. And until then, all right, you guys stay cool. Take it easy and keep watching films, all right, guys? Take care.